You may not know it, but it's likely that some of the food you eat and products you use every day contain palm oil. This edible, versatile vegetable oil is found in nearly 50% of all packaged and supermarket products. This includes everything from pastries, peanut butter and chocolate, to shampoo, soap and lipstick. In some regions, it's also used as a biofuel and as animal feed. Palm oil is widely used because it is a combination of high quality and versatility with cheap production. However, cheap and mass-produced palm oil comes at a cost. Why is palm oil bad for the environment? Palm oil is found in the fruit of the oil palm tree, which exclusively grows in tropical climates. Approximately 90% of the world's palm oil is grown across just a few islands in Indonesia and Malaysia. This region contains one of the most biodiverse tropical forests in the world. While palm oil has many diverse uses, its proliferation is devastating the diversity of the natural world. Palm oil production is a leading driver of deforestation and habitat loss, particularly in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Nigeria, the top three regions for palm production. Because of the industry's high deforestation rate, Indonesia is currently the third largest global producer of greenhouse gas. Worldwide production of palm oil has grown steadily in the last five decades. Annual production increased 400% between 1995 and 2015, and it is expected to grow by the same rate before 2050. According to World Agroforestry, palm oil plantations account for 10% of all permanent global cropland. The sheer quantity of palm oil being produced, and the land required to do so, means that huge areas of tropical forests and valuable ecosystems with high conservation values are being cleared. The replacing of diverse natural environments with vast, monoculture palm plantations has destroyed critical habitats for many critically endangered species. In 1985, uh, Rio in Sumatra was covered by natural forests. The natural forest was the home for wild elephants and uh, wild tigers. But since the, uh, the industry came in into the province, that then start the deforestation. According to the World Wildlife Fund, forests are frequently burned to make space for palm oil crops, a key contributor to the industry's greenhouse gas emissions. The intensive cultivation methods favored on such plantations also results in serious soil pollution extensive water contamination and erosion. The WWF says, the practice of draining and converting tropical peat forests in Indonesia is particularly damaging. These carbon sinks store more carbon per unit area than any other ecosystem in the world. Additionally, forest fires used to clear vegetation in the establishment of palm plantations are a source of carbon dioxide that contributes to climate change. Celebrated anthropologist and conservationist Dr. Jane Goodall has described rainforests as ecological marvels, millions of years in the making. They contain a staggering diversity of life. They create the oxygen we breathe and regulate our climate. They are our life support system. But rainforests are at grave risk. Every second of every day, an irreplaceable rainforest the size of a football field is destroyed. Powerful economic and political interests are driving their destruction to produce beef, palm oil, and paper. How does palm oil production impact wildlife? The extensive industrial destruction of forests by palm oil plantations inevitably impacts the local flora and fauna. Intentional burning, in particular, causes extreme habitat loss. Deforestation and pollution of air, water, and soil destroys the habitat of endangered and indigenous animals in the areas surrounding palm oil plantations. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List of Threatened Species, Palm oil production affects at least 193 threatened species around the world. IUCN also estimates that the expansion of oil palm could affect 54% of all threatened mammals and 64% of all threatened birds globally. The IUCN explains, it also reduces the diversity and abundance of most native species. It has played a major role in the decline in species such as orangutans and tigers. Some 10,000 of the estimated 75,000 to 100,000 critically endangered Bornean orangutans are currently found in areas allocated to oil palm. The IUCN estimates that 750 to 1,250 orangutans are killed yearly in human orangutan conflicts, of which most are linked to the expansion of palm-based agriculture. 
According to National Geographic, almost 150,000 critically endangered Bornean orangutans perished between 1999 to 2015. Sumatran rhinoceroses and elephants are also impacted by unsustainable palm oil production. According to WWF, fewer than 3,000 Sumatran elephants now remain in the area. The Sumatran rhino population is also unstable, and the combination of poaching and palm oil production threatens the rapidly dwindling population. How does palm oil impact people? Palm oil production also has a lasting impact on local communities, and the associated pollution is a growing problem for people throughout Southeast Asia. Many communities also suffer economically from the development of expanding and new palm oil plantations. Often, people's lack of access to the forests is not adequately compensated by the profits of palm oil production. Goodall has said that in addition to wiping out countless species, deforestation marginalizes the poor and deepens inequality. These industries are threatening the survival of indigenous communities. As deforestation continues to displace wildlife such as tigers, orangutans, and elephants, the increase in human-wildlife conflict results in both human and non-human casualties. Many indigenous communities, in addition to NGOs and environmental groups, protest the expansion of palm oil production in Indonesia. In, in Jambi, one of the provinces in the uh, island of Sumatra, is the conflict between the local people and, and the palm oil company. This community resistance is met in part with violence and has resulted in the murder of several prominent campaigners and activists. Human rights lawyer Antonio Treo Cabrera was ambushed by gunmen leaving a church in Honduras in 2012. Cabrera's death was preceded by a series of successful cases, in which he represented local organizations against the palm oil company Dynant. While the company was never linked to Cabrera's death, in 2013, the International Finance Corporation denied Dynant a multi-million dollar loan installment. The corporation cited allegations that 40 different murders could be linked to its plantations, security guards, and third-party security contractors. Environmental activist Bill Kayong, who had been working with Bordian villages to reclaim land from a Malaysian palm oil company, was also murdered. While three individuals were originally charged with the murder, a director and shareholder of the Tanghua Nia plantation was suspected by police and fled the country. 45-year-old Datuk Stephen Lee Chi Kiang is the fourth and main suspect to be charged with the PKR rep's murder. Just days after Bill Kayong was gunned down mafia style on June 22nd this year, Lee fled the country and has been on the run ever since. Local police and the Interpol had been on a manhunt and they managed to arrest him in China with the help of Chinese authorities. Unfortunately, many reports of activist deaths follow a similar pattern, including the murder of the Guatemalan teacher Rigoberto Lima Choc, one of the first people to document the negative impact of palm oil production on the local community and environment. Land conflicts have become increasingly common as plantations continue to grow, and human rights groups watch the palm oil industry closely. How do palm oil bans work? Palm oil bans are one way in which the international community is attempting to take action on unsustainable palm oil production. Last year, Peru became the second South American country after Colombia to make a sustainable palm oil pledge. It aims to end palm oil-driven deforestation by 2021. Peru's environment-minded commitment aligns with the IPCC Fifth Assessment Report, which assesses the potential impacts of climate change and ways to adapt to and mitigate the environmental crisis. Peru's pledge also aligns with the Joint Declaration of Intent, signed with Norway and Germany, which aims for the end of deforestation by 2021. In 2018, Norway announced a complete ban on palm oil-based biofuels. While biofuels make up just one section of the palm oil market, new European Union policies restricting the use of palm in non-food sectors aim to reduce overall demand. Norway's Rainforest Foundation commissioned a 2017 report on palm oil-based biofuels and found them to be more damaging to the climate than fossil fuels, perhaps several times worse. The EU is working toward a 2030 deadline to phase out the use of palm oil. In 2018, British supermarket Iceland introduced a self-imposed ban on palm oil in all of its private label products. The supermarket worked with Greenpeace to announce the campaign. Oh, Rangtan in my bedroom. Just before you go, why were you in my bedroom? I really want to know. There's a human in my forest and I don't know what to do. 
He destroyed all of our trees for your food and your shampoo. There's a human in my forest and I don't know what to do. He took away my mother and I'm scared he'll take me too. By eliminating palm oil from its own brand products, Iceland aims to reduce the amount of palm oil used each year by 500 tons. Palm oil is a complicated issue, and while boycotting palm oil as an individual, a company, or in the form of a national ban is one option, some experts point out that an even more land-hungry form of oil production may take its place. What about sustainable palm oil? If the biggest companies can be sustainable, so the others will follow. But if the biggest cannot, what will happen with the others? So you're trying to make an example of Sinarmas? Yes, of course. So that's why we keep pushing Sinarmas. You're the biggest. You should be leading the example to show the government and also other stakeholders in the industries and the people that you can change. Compared to other oils, palm oil is a remarkably economical crop. It is the sheer scale of demand and production that causes difficulties. According to WWF, palm oil currently supplies 35% of the world's vegetable oil demand on just 10% of the land. Also, despite the impact of unsustainable production on local people, palm oil is a crucial crop for certain communities. The WWF explains, Palm oil is an important crop for the GDP of emerging economies. There are millions of smallholder farmers who depend on producing palm oil for their livelihood. Boycotting palm oil is not always the answer, but demanding more action to tackle the issues and go further and faster is. The Roundtable for Sustainable Palm Oil, or RSPO, certification is one such effort to improve the industry's sustainability. The RSPO has a production standard that sets best practices producing and sourcing palm oil. It also currently has the buy-in of most of the global industry. Of course, being the first uh, company in Indonesia to obtain the RSPO certificate, uh, we are proud and uh, we hope that uh, other plantation company in Indonesia uh, will follow suit. 20% of palm oil production worldwide has been certified to the standards of the round table. This includes over 3.2 million hectares of certified land. By growing sustainably and providing encouragement and incentives for companies, the RSPO aims to improve the overall standard of palm oil production. Goodall also supports sustainable palm oil production. I'd say ban palm oil altogether because vegetable oil is needed and it might mean even more land destroyed to grow other kinds of vegetable oil. So the solution is to have palm oil from sustainable plantations, no more cutting down of old growth forests. Some experts believe that palm oil alternatives are the best way to deal with the sustainability issues of mass-produced palm oil. Earlier this year, Bill Gates's investment fund, Breakthrough Energy Ventures, led a $20 million Series A investment round in C16 Biosciences. The startup uses bioreactors to grow oil in a lab that's almost identical to traditional palm. Cells need sugar just like we do, right? And that's what, that's what makes these really, really awesome is that they take the sugar in and they do some really interesting chemistry and biology inside themselves and they make, they turn that sugar into oils. C16 aims to replace all deforestation-linked palm oil with its sustainable, lab-grown alternative. A San Francisco-based startup called Coverti is also working on a sustainable alternative to palm oil, as is the University of Bath in the UK. The phasing out of products that use unsustainable palm oil is made possible by a combination of legislation, grassroots campaigning, and sustainable alternatives such as C16's lab-produced oil. C16 brews palm oil much like beer, which the company believes is a likely path in the development of sustainable palm oil alternatives. In a short film for climate change organization The Year's Project, Goodall gives a reason for hope. But there is still hope, where a different future awaits us, where faith unites us to make rainforests a shared spiritual priority where we teach our communities that rainforests are a sacred trust, where we feed a growing planet without converting rainforests, where we work with companies to ensure their products are deforestation free, and where we make sure that governments protect forests and the rights of indigenous peoples. This is the future 
where we do what is right. That's it for today. Did you learn anything new about palm oil? Do you actively avoid unsustainable palm oil in your life? Let us know in the comments below. As always, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. New videos every Tuesday and Friday.